Amanda Staveley, who was operating on behalf of the Saudis, has come out with a, a, a written... She's written an open letter to yeah. Tracy Couch, um, who's leading a... Gov- she's, she's leading a government-commissioned review of football's governance. And... Uh, Amanda Stavely criticises the use of confidential arbitration processes to resolve disputes within football before she adds, one might justifiably ask why that model is so favoured by those responsible for regulating the sport if they have nothing to hide. It's nonsense. First and foremost, what she's saying isn't steeped in any real fact. But where she is right, and and where I do agree with her, is that the transparency methodology should be part and parcel of arbitration processes is isn't just in the Premier League. It, it's the EFL as well. You've got two facets. You've got an arbitration panel which is made up of people that are seconded in to, that don't understand football business that take forever and a day to get to decisions because half the time they're being briefed on how football hangs together, what the accountancy principles are, what the reasons are behind the football peculiarities that are going on. Right. So you've got that part of things that aren't working very well. And you've got people like Trevor Birch trying to fix that in the EFL and the Premier League needs to do the same. It needs to second a group of experts that are readily available that you can go to to understand football business and can get to decisions quickly. The second part of it, and where she bloody well knows, is this is nothing to do with the government. This is to do with the internal rules inside football that football itself has voted for, including Newcastle United, that suggests that arbitration panels remain trans- um, remain behind closed Secret. doors. Well, they remind that they remind. Why not change the rules, though? That is the gift of the clubs in the Premier League and the Football League. So she, I mean, Simon, it's honestly, got nothing to do you're, with you're being unfair in her because no, she, I, no, your outburst in her, she, I think, she, is unfair. She's because calling for Amanda Stavely's interest is based upon Amanda Stavely's opportunity, and all this nonsense I had to listen to last year about her in tears about the opportunity that was missed for Newcastle United. It's really about the opportunity to be missed for Amanda Stavely, and we need look, to get look, that Simon, into, into focus. I know Amanda Stavely; she did one hell of a lot of work spanning a long, long number of months. I'm sure she did to try and facilitate I, this thing I, on behalf I, of the. I, with other people's money. Happen. So why do you have rules in place that sh- that do not uh, finish up with us knowing the reasons why the takeover didn't happen? Because the football rules... We, we need transparency. I, 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 I'll answer the question. The football rules, and I agree, and this is where I agree with Amanda, there is no reason why in this day and age, in the 21st century, that the football business doesn't operate with complete and utter transparency. In real terms, despite the notion that these businesses are owned by people that have private wealth to do what they want, they are, in essence, public domain businesses. Not because they are funded by the public, but because of the value that they have to the community. So I'm exactly in the place that Amanda Staveley is about changing the rules to incorporate transparency. But it is not the government's job to change the rules. It's nothing to do with the government. You have 20 members of the Premier League that Richard Masters represent, and if they want to change those rules, 14 of them can rock up and call for an issue to change the rules for transparency and have all of these findings in the public domain. Now, you need to be careful what you wish for, because clearly there is a reason. Richard Masters isn't coming out and saying, I'm going to put this in front of the clubs, because clearly behind closed doors, the clubs themselves, and not in this instance Newcastle United, because it doesn't suit them. And by the way, this isn't an agenda against Newcastle United. If this group of people that were trying to buy Newcastle were trying to buy an- another club in the Premier League, they would fall foul of the same circumstances they've fallen foul of. And what this well, is really got to what this is really about, Jim. Let's not lose the essence of what this is really about. This is about piracy issues. This, this is about people that of a Saudi Arabian <sighs> persuasion and influence that have hijacked broadcasting deals and pirated them. Well, and if you it cannot, is about, right, and you if it is have, about that, if it is about that, get it out in the open and then can, we can have a look at it. Yes, Jim, but you can't put it in the open unless the member clubs decide that that's what they want. But you've just said that they should But that's up to them. For that. It's not up to Amanda Staveley. It's up to them. But she's... But, but she's but, Simon, I can see exactly what she's doing here and so can you. Deep down, you know the Premier League's not going to change this. So how about some government pressure to change it? That's what she's because, saying. Because it's nothing to do with government. It's to do with the 20 clubs that are inside the Premier League and the 20 clubs that believe it's appropriate to change the governance of football to make it transparent. And what Amanda is doing is tub-thumping, as she always does, making a lot of noise to try and create an opportunity to, occupy, to operate in a you vacuum. Just She'd made a good point. She, she's making a point that needs to be should made this, about should the transparency. Process be open and transparent? But she's, but she's she, but should she, be. But she needs to make that point with the twenty clubs that vote for it. The government can't come in and suggest. To but the you Premier just League, said they're not going to vote for it. 
No, I'm suggesting that there, at this current time, there clearly isn't an appetite in the football fraternity. And let's also be clear what we're talking about here. Do we need, do we need another nation state coming into football with billions and billions and billions and billions of pounds that has no regard for the well-being of the ecosystem doing precisely what it wants. There's a question and answer on that that could be, no, we don't. But the, that ship has sailed. The world of football is changing again. It is no longer millionaire status. It's billionaires and foreign nations that are going to come in and run our football franchises and well, our look, football I'll, businesses. I'll, I'll localise it then. Do you not think every Newcastle fan in the land deserves to know why the thing fell through? Do I, I'll do, answer that do, for you. Do, yes, they do. Do I think that every football fan or every Newcastle fan that supports Newcastle, that supports an initiative that their club has done nothing to change in 20 years, 28 years. Newcastle are a member club of the Premier League. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to change the transparency rules around arbitration, it was their gift to have done this at any time in the last 29 years since the formation of the Premier League. Why haven't they done it? Uh, Why hasn't Mike Ashley filed his accounts last year that would he extended his accountancy period from June to July to absorb certain finances and hasn't filed them in January? January. Why don't people do things properly in football rather than sit there and start tub thumping now because an agenda that Amanda Staveley is representing on behalf of Newcastle fans when really it's about Amanda Staveley's no, opportunity? No, hang on a second. The very question you just asked is the right question. Why do, don't people in football do it the right way? That's what she's asking. Be- because there is a cost. She's saying, why isn't the process open and transparent? Okay, why why is it that... What's that to hide? Okay, let me give you another example of how football operates. Why is it that football players are secured creditors and nobody else is? Why do, when a club goes into administration, why do the players have to be paid all their wages, but every other creditor, whether it's the greengrocer, the candlestick maker, or the butcher, gets knocked? Why? Because football gets held together in a certain way, and there are certain things that are unique to an industry. Now, I am agreeing with Amanda, Amanda that transparency should be now part part and parcel of the business of football. Hallelujah. That's the only But that's it's not Amanda's gift. It's not Amanda's gift to tub thump and rail the government to do it. But it's, someone's going to say it. It's the 20 clubs in she the Premier League. She was at the heart of the oh, matter here. It's the 20 clubs, including Newcastle, that have attached no value to it. And they can still do it if they want to of which Newcastle are one. So Newcastle should be asking to put forward an agenda in front of the other 20 clubs inside the Premier League saying, we want to implement a rule change right. which brings all arbitration towards the public domain. So what's now, wrong with that? Nothing wrong with it. And why wouldn't the others vote for it? Because currently the initiative hasn't been put in front of it. I can imagine why the big six won't vote, 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 won't vote for why? it. Why? Why do you think? Well, for some reason, best known to themselves, they don't want transparency in these issues. No, no, issues. no. Why do you think in this particular instance this won't serve the big six? Go on. Well, obviously, because the last thing they want is another billionaire rocking in, being able to queer their pitch. Along come Newcastle with a big bag of money. One of those big six clubs, most likely Arsenal, who are not a big six club anymore, are going to find themselves sort of moved out of commission because they've got another group of people that have got an inordinate amount of money that are going to buy and change the direction of football inside the Premier League She's again. right in what she's doing here. She's right in what she's doing. You've just admitted no, that she, you, you she, concur she, with what, she's why she's right, doing She's it. right to call for transparency. She's not right to go to the government and she's not right to be disingenuous to hide behind a veneer of what's right for football because it's right for Amanda Staveley. And I'm not going to allow an agenda just to be consistently perpetuated by Amanda as if she's some sort of patron saint sailing in to be able to create a... I I don't know, you've obviously got some personal problem with Amanda Staveley, I don't. But the situation is, if football isn't going to change from within which it isn't going to do, then you need to bring outside pressure. And no better and more powerful outside pressure than that of the government. It's simple. No, Even that, I see then, it. Then, then, then the next thing you'll have is government sitting in there regulating football. And then you'll have a dynamic which completely changes. You cannot, anybody in their right mind, me. anybody in their right mind, so the it. last thing you want is a regulator from government. You might want independent regulation. That might be an argument you can... You can you right, can, independent but regulation not government. then. Um, Amanda is creating a landscape. But in principle, this is right. right. And, and by the way, I don't have any personal agenda against Amanda Stavely. I have an agenda against hypocrisy and double standards, right? And the bottom line is, is that Newcastle... This is not Newcastle being singled out. If these group of people that operate the way that they do were buying any other football club in the Premier League, and I do feel sympathy for Newcastle fans because they've seen Utopia. Of course, of they've course. seen the, the ridding of Mike Ashley and all the things that associated they with him. They thought they were going to be another with Manchester the replacement City. of someone else. And it's absolutely right that the football world 
Jim, the football world shouldn't give 91% of the TV money to the Premier League and 9% to 72 clubs, but it does. And there should but be Simon, more. I can see why the process has got to change. Bassini didn't get Bolton, and this is why. So Bolton fans can can see for themselves why this guy was going to do no, no good whatsoever for their club. But, but, Craig White has shouldn't to, have got Rangers, but, has but to, he did. There has to be a balance. But this is why he but, shouldn't there have has got to Rangers. Be a, there has, to, there be has a, to be transparency. There has to be, there has to be a balance between what people should know and what they do know. And I do understand that there's an element of people's feelings that football gives them the right to understand every new nuance and peculiarity. But the transparency argument that we're both discussing is that right. That we're agreed on. Because I agree that it should be trans- agreed on. I agree that in the 21st century... So why don't you take back pub- your little personal spat no, towards because, Amanda because I think who's never me- done you I think, any harm. I think the mechanism that's being deployed is it's very simple. If the clubs want to change it, it's their gift. If Newcastle want to change the transparency rules, they can phone up the 14 other clubs that will be in the same camp because they're not in a big six and get it passed. They can get 14 other clubs to rock up to Richard Marston and say, we're not asking you anymore to put this on the table. We're telling you as the 14 clubs that get the quorum to vote it through that we want arbitration to be changed to be a public domain business. We want a group of experts that understand football on tap, regularly available to us, and we want to do this in the here and now. Jim White. And Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.